Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent snapping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this slider pop-up card. You just pull on the ribbon, the image stands up and you can see the sentiments. I think this is such a clever idea and it really is easy to make. So the card pieces that you're going to need is a card base of real red and this measures eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarters, scored at four and one eighth and folded. And I'm using our extra thick Whisper White cardstock for this. I felt that this was a little bit um, flimsy for this bit. Um, and I think for um, this job, this extra thick castle comes it really into its own. So this measures four inches by five and five eighths. And you need some pear pizzazz, which measures three and seven eighths by five and a half inches. And another piece of our extra thick cardstock, and that measures two and seven eighths inches by four and three quarter inches. You need a piece of computer paper, which is um, half an inch wide. I'm not sure the length at the moment, but I'll tell you when we get there. Um, that is um, eight inches at the moment. I also have my image ready. Um, and the reason that I've done this is because my last video was the Magic Elf card and I had so much trouble with that. I finished up making so many of these that I decided I wanted to use them up uh, rather than let them go to waste. Um, for me it's Christmas Eve. I know by the time you'll be watching this it will be, uh, Christmas will be gone um, but you can easily change the image here to make it for a birthday card or any other occasion. Um, so bear with me while I make a Christmas card. This will be my first one, well second one for next year now. Um, right, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp my um, bells onto my Pepperzaz sheet. Um, and I'm using Pepperzaz ink. And I've already, or at least I've just re-inked my um, stamp pad so it is exceedingly juicy but it does seem to be working okay it's certainly coming up a lot darker which is what I wanted because on my card here it is very very faint There we go. Now I'll let you into a little secret there. That piece I had already done. This is take three for this video, so that side's already been done. So, see, it does dry off quite nicely. Right, okay. Um, so the next thing we need to do is to cut this. And I'm going to have to mix centimetres with inches here. I don't like centimetres at all. Uh, let's close that up. Um, but I don't have inches coming down here on my trimmer. I've got them across here. Um, so I will tell you, with this bit, I'll tell you um, in inches and in centimetres. So first of all, line the edge here up on the three quarters of a mark, three quarters of an inch, and that is 1.9 centimetres. Just make sure I'm saying this right. Now this one here, it should be on four and three quarter inches or 12.1 centimetres. And then you cut up to 
1.9 centimeters or three quarters of an inch. Okay, I can't get my head right over this, so I can't see if I've got that correct or not. Now we're going to cut this side, so line this one up at three quarters or 2.1 and then bring this down to 12.1 centimeters or four and three quarter inches and then cut it to 2.1 no 1.9 sorry okay so you should finish up with something that's looking like that. don't know why that just went uh, fuzzy. Right, now we need to cut one of these. If you've done a pattern on here that it matters which way it goes, you need to do it at the bottom of your design. So turn this sideways and line this one up again at three quarters of an inch or 1.9 and then you need to cut from that score line to that score line. Don't do the outside bits, just in between. Now, I can't see very well here because I'm looking sideways. I could really do being on top, but let's have a go. It should be up to 1.9. Let's have a look if I've done it. Oh, wow, look at that. A little bit short on this side, but I can sort that out. I will just take my scissors and just snip that little bit. I have gone a little bit too far down, but I'm not going to worry about that. That's it. Okay. Just flatten that bit down. Okay, now we need to do some scoring. And I'm going to try and do it on here. Um, which way around do I need it? This way. Right, you should line that up at the three quarters mark. Okay, we've got the cut end down the bottom here. So line that up at three quarters or 1.9 centimeters and then with your score um, scoring tool move that along to move that back to my three quarters so this should come to the it'd be easier just to check it this way wouldn't it okay so that's eight centimeters and you've got to go back to 1.9 that was a lot easier sensible right now I've got that in the right place let's move that over okay and then just score that right okay and then move this along to um, that's what we call two and a half inches. Uh, let's line this back up again. That's it. And then you're going to score again from the cut line there up to that cut line. But just between the cut lines, don't go outside and then move it up again and this time you need to go up to four and a quarter bring this back down that's it and then score up to the score line the cut line rather okay Yep, that's fine. And now, using your bone folder, you need to fold these. So the first one 
up here, up the top here, we're going to fold upwards like that. Oh, well, that's all right. Get a design on both sides of mine. That's a result, isn't it? So that one comes back. This one comes inwards. Okay. And then this one comes up. Okay, so you finish up with that. All right. Right, so the next thing we need to do is um, the tag. What I've done with mine is I decorated each corner by using the Curvy Trio Punch. And then we need to take our piece of computer paper, fold it loosely around here, and cut the excess off. So this is where I can tell you how much you need. Well, I've got six and five eighths. You could do six and a half, that would be fine. Okay, let me just write that down so I know. Six and a half for computer paper. Now what we're going to do is we're going to seal those two together. There's a little bit of snail. Works best when once it's opened. There we go, got rid of that quickly. So pop that back in. And it, all this is going to do is going to act as a stabiliser for our tag. Okay, so you definitely don't want it tight. Now I'm going to flatten both ends and you can see how much over that's coming, okay, because it needs to be loose. Right, now on this piece we're going to use our one inch punch to punch out a finger hole and all I am doing is I want less than half and I'm just making sure that I'm equal distance over here. I could measure it, but I can't be that far out, can I? There we go. No, that's brilliant. That would be very good. Right, so what we need to do now is to put some of our tear and tape on the back. And the back to me is the side that's got the join on there. Okay, so just pop that on there. And whilst you've got the tape, you also need to put a strand down this side, as close to the edge as you can get it. It is tear and tape, but I quite often get caught onto the cardstock and tear that as well, so I tend to cut mine. But it does tear very, very easily. Okay, so one down either side, one down across the bottom, and then one across the bottom of this folded bit here. First of all, we take the backing off of this one.
and we need to stick it across here. Now it's going to cover up a bit of your hole but we can punch that off again but you need to get this so that it is in the centre and it will go over that cut line and that cut line so just make sure that the amount you have over this side is about the same as that side there we go now you'll see that you've come over here but that's okay you just take your punch and punch that bit off now I'll cut a bit more of the green off there but that doesn't matter that's fine okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our tag put it through the stabiliser and we've got to attach it onto here now you'll notice that this goes over the edge of the cut line okay now the reason that is done is because without that then this tail here just this would just flap up and down so you need something to anchor it down okay so take the backing off that tear and tape and then line this up this is a little bit fiddly you've got to just make sure that you've got it straight so you've got equal distance on both sides and the way I check it is to make sure I got the same green same width green strip down here when I'm happy that I've got that and that it's straight so I've got the same gap all the way down all the way down then I go for it okay so this is how it's going to be working Okay, couldn't be much easier than that, could it? So, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp my sentiment in here. Um, now, I think I'll anchor this down. I know me. I'll make some kind of mistake by doing it that way. Okay, so let's take the backing off of the tear and tape. I see I've got a little bit over there, so if you do that, just tuck it in. There we go. And then just place this in the centre. very central there have I I've not tried doing that with this tear and tape before that came off quite easily so obviously it gives you a little bit of time to correct mistakes right okay oh nice one yes okay so what's going to happen is brilliant yes yeah. see so much easier than the last um, project I worked on. Right now I'm using the Reason is the Season stamp set for this one. And I'm going to use Jesus is the Reason for the Season and also a Very Merry Christmas to you. Um, again, I, in fact, no, I'm going to use my old olive because it comes up a bit darker. Well, that might come up dark enough, mightn't it? No, I'll stick to old olive. So first of all, I'm going to do Jesus is the reason. Um, I'll have to get this down to me to try and make sure I'm nice and straight. But no, come on, be brave. So the other one now, I need to go up here Right, can we 
do it again. Make sure you're straight. obviously makes I'm not going to say perfect but makes you a lot better okay so there's that put it up now my um, one little bit that I'm going to do to this to fancy it up a little bit is I'm going to use my um, piercing mat um, off the top of my head I can't think whether this is still available or not um, but I just felt that it needed something some little extra around it in fact you don't want to look at rhubarb do you let's try this it's certainly distracting me okay so that's that I mean this bit is definitely optional um, you could do it by hand um, that I bought these when they were available. I really hope they still are, um, because to me, this adds so much. It's such a simple little thing, but it does add so much to cards. I miss out the holes when I get close to like the feet. The hand I missed out. I'm going to miss the bell as well. I've jumped that one. I've gone round all the way. There we go. See, I've left it blank. Okay, now I'm going to adhere this straight on here. I'm not going to use um, dimensionals, so I've got to do it from, say, below his cuff there to a little bit above his underarm. And I'm going to put um, liquid glue on that so a little bit under his cuff which is about there I think that should be right obviously you don't want to do too much you don't want to come past that fold line otherwise you're not going to be opening up be able to open up Okay, so that's him all done very nicely. And then for the ribbon, um, I'm, I forgot to do this bit, didn't I? Never mind, it can be done from here. I just need a little ribbon slot here. And all I do to get this one, it's this bit here that I'm doing. Um, I just make sure that I've got the same gap on either side as I do with these things. Okay, that's lovely. So, a uh, little bit of red ribbon. I know this one is retired. And then I'm just going to thread it through there. And to keep it together, I'm going to use a blue dot I normally tie knots in things like this but the problem is with a knot is if you needed to send this through the post chances are it would make it that you have to pay the extra postage and if for the sake of the glue got dot oop, a glue dot if we can avoid that we might as well mightn't we and then I'm just going to cut those at an angle. In fact, let's cut one of them lower than the other. There we go. And then that's it. That's the card done. Nice, quick and easy, isn't it? And it's a proper card, so um, proper opening card. Let's clear this off. There we go. So I hope you like today's project. As I say, I know Christmas is over for you. Uh, Christmas Eve for me so I'm still very Christmassy um, but I hope you like it I hope you decide to give it a try um, make it a birthday card or anniversary card anything that you like anything that you want to give somebody a card that's that little bit different where people will say oh wow like that so there you go 
Many thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions, please contact me. I'm always happy to help. If you've enjoyed my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the button that's on the right hand side of the screen, or that may be underneath, depends what you're watching this on. If you'd like to buy any of the products that I featured here today, please click on the link that's at the bottom of the screen or possibly under the screen um, and that will take you straight to my 24-7 online stamping up shop. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. <laughs>